Hi everyone, today I'm going to take a look at what a med school entrance exam would look like. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the MCAT exam, which is for entrance to American and Canadian med schools. Now, Australia has something quite similar called the GAMSAT, but the MCAT itself is a multi-choice exam and is taken on the computer. It covers a really broad range of material. You need to know the foundations of chemistry, physics and biology, but you also need to know some psychology and social behavior uh, and also be able to show that you have critical thinking and reasoning skills. This is because, you know, to get entrance into med school, they want people who would make good doctors and not just necessarily want to test to find who has the most you know, knowledge or academic knowledge, but they want to find people who can take that knowledge and apply it to the role as a medical professional. So I think that's why you see some of that, you know, reasoning skills being tested and also the social aspect and having some understanding there. The entire exam, I think this year, would take you six hours and 15 minutes, but including time for breaks and things, you'd actually be at the exam hall a bit longer than that, so it would be a full day ordeal. The combined physics and chemistry section is 95 minutes long, and in this video today, I'm just going to be looking at some of these physics type questions to see what the scope of your physics knowledge would have to be to do well on this. This physics and chemistry section would have 59 questions and these would range from some that are just independent questions and some that require you to read a reasonably big passage and then answer lots of questions that relate to that passage. The sample exam that I've created today and printed is just sourced from compiling lots of different sample physics questions from around the internet uh, and this will be a link in the description so you can download it and follow along with me throughout this video if you like. Let's have a look and if you stay till the end of the video I'll create a little mind map of these physics questions to help you better understand what you exactly need to know. The first few questions we have are all reasonably short and independent. We have one here about free body diagrams and understanding which forces act in which directions on an object. Uh, we have one here about essentially electric circuits, um, dealing with resistance, voltage and current. Then we have one which involves a bit of fluids, so relating to the volumetric flow rate. In itself, once you understand that concept, it's a pretty simple and short calculation. Again, with some of these questions here, reasonably short calculations if you know the formula that you need or you understand the reasonably basic physics concept behind it. We have one here about dimensional analysis, which will be quite an important topic and is sometimes overlooked by people when they're studying. Dimensional analysis at any level is very useful to physics to understand if formulas make sense. Maybe if you're even trying to think of a formula from memory, you can check that it you know, works out and that you've remembered it correctly by analyzing its dimensions. Then we have one here about what essentially would be most useful for things like medical physics, understanding you know, radiation um, and understanding that say beta rays would be deflected by an electric field. These problems so far pretty much all relate to biological systems and living things, even though they are just about physics. Our next question is one of these ones with quite a long passage. So we can see there's a bit to read here and they're talking about something in the eye of far-sightedness. Um, a vision problem that occurs as a result of light rays entering the eyeball but converging behind the cornea. So to understand a lot of this passage, we're talking about lenses and light rays and how they would, you know, end or refract uh, at certain places and how they would come to a focus. So if we were to read through all this information, looking at the table, we can answer these next four or so problems. As well as reading the passage, to answer these problems, you'll need to know things like the lens equation, um, which relates you know, object distance to image distance to focal length, and like a magnification equation that relates the image distance to the object distance. Those, I think, concepts will get you pretty much through these problems here. 
And then we're on to another passage-based problem. This time it's less obviously medical and instead is a bit about, I guess, kinematics and uh, even springs, spring constants and elasticity. We've assembled a slingshot constructed from rubber bands at the edge of a tabletop and we're predicting the horizontal range that a launched marble will land from the base of the table. Much of this passage and the questions which relate to it is to do with work and elastic potential energy which can be found from the change in kinetic energy. We have a question here about percentage error which isn't inherently just related to this problem but like the dimensional analysis question is just relevant and useful throughout physics. So they want to test that you do know this quite fundamental skill over the page and these questions here still relate to that passage and we're wanting to be able to extrapolate a graph to find the data that we need and also maybe put to use a little bit of some kinematic equations so you know these are things that just relate uh, distance travel to your speed the time that's elapsed some variables like that, maybe even your acceleration or your downwards acceleration would be useful here. So the kinematic equations would, I guess, be fundamentals for any of these mechanics type problems. We then have a bit of a different question here. It's another independent one and it's about, well, nuclear physics. And we're being asked which isotope is the most likely uh, in this reaction. And for questions like this, there's a few, I guess, basic laws about nuclear physics. One is that it's going to obey the conservation of mass here. So if a neutron is of mass one, then we're having three um, neutrons here. We'd add three to this value of 92. That's our mass value up the top there. That would give us 95. And then you can see that we need to conserve this number of 236. Uh, if we've got a total of 95, then 141 is the only mass number, which would make sense, which would give D as our answer here. Our last problem here for this little sample exam is number 20, and it's about fluids. It's about understanding Bernoulli's principle, and of course, they're applying it to a medical situation about um, vascular flutter, which is when an artery becomes constricted due to the accumulated plaque in its inner walls. Now you don't need to know anything about vascular flutter to answer this question. The principles are inherently like physics. Um, their constriction causes the pressure to drop and the vessel to collapse. This exam does like applying some of these concepts to medical situations and that totally makes sense. I would say that it's not actually that different to say first year or introductory physics in that sense. Like even a physics course that's just physics in its own right will also have problems that relate to applications in this way, whether it's medical, biological, um, or even to chemistry and other things. I think especially in maybe first year university physics or introductory physics courses, it's pretty common to see physics portrayed within a passage of like applications of where it can be useful. Maybe that actually just helps people understand it better as well if they can see how this physics is useful and how they might use it in whatever job they want to go on to do. So really to prepare for the physics that's in this MCAT, I don't think it's gonna to be too much different from how you would prepare to pass maybe a first year physics exam. From looking at this exam, you might see these five key areas of physics emerging. We've got units and dimensions, forces, fluids, waves, and radioactive decay. Some of the essential points that you'd want to study, well, let's start with units and dimensions. You'd want to know your SI units, your unit conversions, how to do dimensional analysis. We've got a few examples here of often forgotten um, unit definitions and also how to find percentage error. So we have one of these formulas here. For forces, of course, it's the usual suspects. You'd want to know how to do free body diagrams. Those are those pictures with the lines coming off them which show the forces and apply Newton's first, second and third laws to solving problems or doing calculations. 
For fluids, you'd want to be pretty good with the concepts of buoyancy, density, hydrostatic pressure, continuity, and using Bernoulli's equation. It often takes a little while to build up some intuition in these concepts. So I'd say maybe this could be a bit of a focus area because usually people already have a bit of an intuition or at least a bit of experience with things like forces, more so than the fluid section. For waves, you'd want to be able to you know, know about light and sound waves. You'd want to be able to use and apply wave properties such as the wavelength, speed, frequency and amplitude of a wave. You'd want to know how sound is produced and for sound waves, how loudness is quantified. You'd want to know about the Doppler effect and also optics and lenses. Of course, this last one would be applicable to things like the human eye. For our last section, radioactive decay, this is that nuclear physics part. You'd want to be able to recognize and understand alpha, beta and gamma decay and also be able to do half-life calculations. Of course, this isn't an extensive list of every possible thing you'd need to know, but I think it's broad enough to kind of encompass all these must-know areas of physics to doing well on the MCAT. I've known a few keen physicists who have taken the MCAT exam or a similar one for Australia, just to keep their career options open in case they ever did want to go into medicine and pursue that option. I'd say that's not a bad idea. I've never wanted to do med school myself, but it does attract a lot of intelligent people and the study for it does certainly take a bit of time. So good luck to everyone who is planning to go down this path and thanks for watching.